all right what is going on guys it is your boy tkd123 here back again here on playstation source and we have a topic here that i've been kind of working out how i want to address this and how i want to formulate my opinion on this because uh you know of course we have all this in the news about ps4 production continuing through the end of 2021 which, we'll, which we will get to and how that interplays with ps5 stock what does that mean for those that are trying to get a ps5 and ultimately what i feel is the real problem with this in quotes because it's not really a problem but it is something that i do have a bit of a concern with going into the middle of this generation but before we get started on all that if you like the content leave a like on the video it really helps the channel as well as hit subscribe to play and swords to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Down below, find links to our Discord, our Twitter, and of course, our Anchor link that way you can listen to our podcast, Road to Forbidden West, going up every single Sunday up until the release of Horizon Forbidden West, going over news, lore, and all different info and different cool stuff involving the world of Horizon Zero Dawn and of course, Horizon Forbidden West, leading up to release involving, of course, a spoiler cast and a review of said game to end off Road to Forbidden West. Two episodes up already you can check them out on the channel on playlists and of course podcast services around the globe let me just let me just copy greg miller why not <laughs> you know what i'm saying but going into here this came out last week didn't have time to cover it last week but i figured i'd just double down and do it this week here of course sony reportedly planned to cease ps4 production at the end of 2021 this is from push square link below in the description but this reads as follows according to a new report from bloomberg who cite anonymous sources familiar with the situation apparently sony's initial plan was to discontinue the ps4 at the end of 2021 with ps5 taking over as the company's sole games console on the market however logistical and production hiccups throughout the last year saw the platform holder reverse the plan instead ensuring PS4 will continue to stock shelves. The report states about a million units of the last-gen machine will be produced this year in order to alleviate some of the pressure on PS5. A Sony spokesperson told Bloomberg the company did not in fact plan to cease PS4 production, pointing out it's quote one of the best-selling consoles ever and that quote there is always crossover between generations. And so that's essentially the main crux here of what we got going on is that they will be continuing PS4 production although there were rumors uh of them stopping ps4 production at the end of this year in 2020 well at the end of last year in december of 2021 uh they are going to continue throughout 2022 stocking ps4s they're going to make about a million units of those ps4s and so i saw a lot of people on twitter talk about how oh this is going to slow down ps5 productions why are they focusing on ps4 production when you know they have trouble stocking ps5s and the, you know bloomberg here notes uh exactly what i assume to be the case and what would be the most logical way of looking at that right is that quote as bloomberg notes the ps4 uses older chips so it won't interfere with ps5 production and due to the console's age it's easy to produce and cheaper to manufacture that's exactly what the ps4 slim was for guys like like it's it's a much cheaper console and much easier console to manufacture as opposed to the ps5 right now where those higher end tier chipsets are having shortages because there's so many different companies on the market trying to get their hands on that high end stuff from you know gpu manufacturers to other competitors like xbox and microsoft you know what i'm saying so them making ps4s is not you know really at all going to interfere with ps5 production those are two separate things that you know they just they just do and they act separately because of course the ps4 is much easier to manufacture for and much cheaper to manufacture for at that so my worry is not in that oh ps5s will you know be manufactured less and everything it's that with ps4s being introduced more into the market in 2022 by a million units or so which uh you know they say here that they weren't planning on ending in 2021 which actually makes sense when you look at the track record right uh i got some stats here for you guys to look at here so the ps3 was discontinued in 2017 and it initially released in 2006 so that equals 11 years on the market in production PS2 got discontinued in 2012, initially releasing in 2000. So that was 12 years of a console life cycle for the PS2. The PS1 was discontinued in 2006 and initially released in 1994. So 12 years on the market. And then we lastly have, of course, the PS4, the most latest PlayStation console, got released, of course, in 2013 and is still to be made here. So it looks like, you know, if 
history judge us right right obviously we're in different circumstances we're in a pandemic ah, da, da, right you would imagine that the ps4 would be discontinued in either 2024 or 2025 making it you know in the same ballpark of 11 12 years of its console life cycle here on the market you know that would peg you at either 11 years or 12 years and that makes perfect sense to me you know what i'm saying so i don't really necessarily buy that the ps4 would have actually ended last year you know what i'm saying um unless it's just a, a, a different sony they're making different choices that could definitely be the case here but judging off history i don't think that was ever going to be the case and i gotta just take sony at their word here because it definitely makes sense you know the ps4 is a huge powerhouse it sold over 160 million units and it's still selling at this point granted it's selling a lot less since the ps5 came out but still selling you know what i'm saying it's a very popular console a lot of people have it so it makes sense that uh you know on top of it being a very popular console they have those comments about how there's always a cross-generational uh you know transition era between both new and old hardware which we are in right now now let's talk a little bit about the real problem right which is not the ps5 stock which is not manufacturing ps5s in my opinion the real thing that we gotta look at is the games is the first party support involving ps4 we all know how we all felt <laughs> when we heard that uh god war ragnarok was going to be a ps4 and ps5 game right um i think we had similar thoughts with, with uh horizon 2 where horizon was positioned as a ps5 only game uh at the reveal and so was god of war and uh you know when i believe it was horizon was first announced that it would be ps4 ps5 i was like okay that's maybe the last one you know there's no way god of war is gonna be ps5 and ps4 right and then lo and behold it came to pass god of war ragnarok is a cross-gen game right which this brings a list of pros and cons that we can weigh out and this is where i think the real problem in quotes problem is with the ps4 still being on shelves and being sold right is that you have the pros of of course having a lot of sales and you can garner a bigger audience with a bigger player install base with a game releasing on ps4 and ps5 that is obvious of course that makes a lot of sense to a lot of people and thus if they're able to make more money on a given product that releases on ps4 and ps5 they were able to turn that money back around funnel it back into the first party development and give us more games like with that huge investment last year that jim ryan announced where what it was some crazy it was a crazy amount i'll put it here on the screen but it was a crazy amount that they were able to funnel back into playstation first party to give us more games in the future right so that's all great and of course the biggest aspect of that right is that more players get to enjoy the first party offerings from playstation that's always a great thing to have more people playing the games that they want to play more PlayStation people you know and those with playstation consoles uh being able to experience the new playstation first party ip without owning the latest console that's always a great thing in my opinion overall no matter how you put it right however However, however, there's always the thing with the cons that you really just can't necessarily ignore involving the quality of the PS5 game, right? Uh, I don't have to go over the whole Mark Cerny Power Hour talk. Long story short, the PS5 has an SSD, it has better architecture, it has better hardware, so they are able to create games that break the bounds of what the last gen was tied to involving a slower hard drive right so you don't need to have necessarily long um long like corridors to load different environments like in horizon zero dawn we, when you're going to the karja land and everything how you have to walk through those really big high arching bridges and everything that's to load the environment in the karja city right in meridia there we go that's what's called uh the meridian meridia whatever it's called y'all know what i'm talking about there are just certain ways that ps4 games are developed and what games in the past have been developed to accommodate a slower hard drive that ps5 ssds and just ssds in general don't have to rely on right so that begs the question when you have a game that is having to cater to the lowest denominator being the ps4 that has to also accommodate for that hard drive on the ps4 can you really make a game truly next gen right and that has been a huge question we've debated about that here and there even on the channel here as well i've gone back and forth on that admittedly right and um, at first i was very much like i do not want ps4 ps5 cross gen right but at, at the end of the day 
right where i'm at right now in 2022 uh with all this being said right is that i just want the ps5 iteration of a game to be of a high quality you know what i'm saying that's all i'm really looking for you know what i'm saying let me know down below if you guys think that uh is something that is of your opinion do you agree with that do you disagree with that let me know down below i want to have a discussion because ultimately it's like look at the end of the day they are going to put out cross-gen games i believe a little bit more further out than God of War Ragnarok. I think we should anticipate that, you know, with them, uh, you know, having PS4 stopped, right? Uh, I think cross-gen games are gonna be here for a little bit longer than after God of War Ragnarok, which is something that I did not think was gonna happen literally like two weeks ago. So all I'm asking for is that the PS5 version is, you know, up to a very very high quality where it really does pay off if you have the playstation 5 console right like that's that's what i'm looking for you know what i'm saying if the ps4 game you know runs fine and it looks worse or this time a third or whatever i obviously assume that they won't make the ps4 version such of a lower quality that it becomes like not even discernible that it's a new game or whatever right like they don't want to put that bad front that that like bad foot forward on the ps4 side with these cross-gen games either i get that but at the same time it's like you know if they're gonna make the ps4 version a very good quality game which i would love for that to be a high quality game you know what i'm saying and like have the people that are you know trying to get a ps5 that will settle with just playing these first party games on ps4 that they have a good experience i hope that the ps5 experience is like exceptional right <laughs> like 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 that's where i'm at where where i really want the highest quality on console with the playstation 5 version of these games and you know it's just the fact of the matter that like how high quality can it be if it has to also cater and run on a ps4 from a base code perspective right like from a base game perspective you know what i'm saying like they 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 feasibly cannot make like two entirely different versions that are entirely different in terms of some of the mechanics and some of the way that the game actually functions and runs uh you know to you know cater to a higher ssd type of you know uh frame and everything so um that's where i'm at you know what i'm saying so and at the end of the day i think this is probably coming off uh very subtly i guess but i'll just say it bluntly here you know what i'm saying and hey if this is a controversial statement my bad if you got problems with this statement let me know down below in the comment section you know what i'm saying we can have a discussion but i have a playstation 5 right so i'm looking forward to the games especially that are specifically catered and specifically for the playstation 5 period that can take full advantage of the system right and don't ha and like doesn't have to worry about having game code that also has to be applicable with the playstation 4 you know um i have a ps5 so 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 that's where kind of i'm at so if you know if i could have a future where you know cross gen uh ends with god war ends with god war ragnarok i would uh, I would I would kind of lean that way uh, overall, but in spite of all that, you know, cross gen games don't really bother me that much. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think a big telling of this will be with Horizon. Um, it's one thing to have a cross gen game at launch like Miles Ross, which was great, and I have uh, you know just I, I didn't see the PS4 version firsthand, but I had many friends that played on PS4 and PS4 Pro. Uh, according to you know, of course, friend of the show Arachnite, he said the PS4 version of Miles is to him unplayable right and then my homie christian buckley on ps4 pro said it was fine it ran well it ran good right so i think the real test is going to be with horizon for been west next month and how the two versions of ps4 and ps5 work with that game specifically given that that given that that game has had more development time overall seemingly and is a much bigger and more complex game overall so i'm very curious to see how that whole unfolds on ps4 and ps5 debate but ultimately that's what i, I think the big problem is the problem is not with the ps5 production it's really going to be with the cross-gen uh, games and uh, seemingly here what I'm going to predict right now, you know, I think we are going to see more cross-gen in the future with PS4 still being made throughout 2022. So what are your thoughts, guys? Down below, let me know in the comment section how you feel about this. Do you want cross-gen? Do you, you know, uh, don't want cross-gen, you know? And uh, if there's anything here in this video that you did not agree with that I said, let me, know, let me know down below in that comment section how you're feeling about it. What are your thoughts? Let's keep it respectful. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a dude talking about games you know what i'm saying so y'all can just comment on my comments but let's be uh 
let's be civil you know what i'm saying and down below as well while you are there hit up that description you can find links to our discord our twitter and of course our anchor link that you can listen to road to forbidden west every single sunday as we get closer and closer to horizon forbidden west like to be if you enjoyed it as well as hit subscribe to play and source to keep up with the latest and greatest in playstation thank you all for watching and as always greatness awaits <laughs>